title of my message is going to be called Fail Like Peter. And no, I'm not giving you an excuse to go out and fail and blame it on me. But that is the title of my message. And I'm going to be going from Joshua 1.8. And it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate, it, meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Someone turn to your neighbor and say, good success. So you realize the Bible didn't just say, and you will make success. You got to realize that there's if there if there's black there's white and if there's good there's bad so there's bad success and I'm gonna be speaking to you guys from the Bible two characters from the Bible um, Apostle Peter and Judas and we know uh, both of them were part of the 12 disciples Jesus friend and see there's G uh, Peter failed a lot, and but Judas he succeeded in many things. But in the thing he succeeded is he he uh, betrayed Jesus, and it was a success. He did something that uh, no one else could do, but it was a bad success. So I'm gonna bring to you guys um, good success and bad success, and three things that made Judas Judas's success a bad success is one he over he overpaid for it. How many of you guys overpaid for uh, something and then you, you overpay for it and you're like, man, I don't like this thing anymore because someone else got it for a cheaper price and I'm getting it here. I paid a whole bunch of money. And when I was uh, like eight, nine years old, I asked my mom for, or my parents for a BMX bike. I found this BMX bike on Craigslist and because uh, I used to bike with my friends a lot and I paid, my, my parents paid a lot of money for it and I got it and then I drove it around with my friends and my other friend had the same BMX bike but for like third third of the price. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, I paid. Now I didn't look at the BMX bike like, no, I can fly on that thing. I just looked at it like it's like every other bike. So things that you overpay for, you you end up despising. And the thing is success that is overpriced is something that you cannot enjoy and Judas succeeded on uh, betraying Jesus or putting him on the cross see he he did the well Pharisees even tried to put Jesus on the cross they tried to they try to do it so many times but they would always come back to the council and they'll tell the council dang I, I he missed this time or he changed his talk I wasn't able to get it he 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 went between our feet we couldn't get it but Jesus fine but Judas was able to betray Jesus and but the price, the thing, the, what, what bad success, the first thing bad success will get you is if it's overpriced. Jesus, uh, Judas succeeded in getting Jesus, uh, Jesus on the cross, but the price he had to pay was much more than what he got. He was able to, he, was, he succeeded, it was, a, it, was a, it was a success, but the price he paid for that success cost him Jesus and eventually his own life. And see... Any success that costs your integrity is a bad success. Any success that causes your family, your health, your career, your, mor your morals, your purity, that is success from Satan. That is called a satanic success. And sooner or later, you might be, no, it's not. But sooner or later, God, Satan will give to you with his right, but eventually he will take from his left. Sooner or later, bad success, it always, uh, success that you have to lose your family, your, your integrity, what you live for, your faith. Sooner or later, my friend, Satan is behind that success. And see, when Jesus came on this earth, he, uh, Satan offered him, uh, Satan offered him so much and uh, he said you could have all this land you could have all the riches everything as long as one thing as long as you bow down and you worship me and Jesus like and the, don't get me wrong what Satan offered Jesus was very good everybody uh, you don't think Jesus wanted the, everything that Satan was offering everybody would want that land but the price did not match the product See, the thing is, yeah, you got all that, but the price to bow down and worship him, Jesus like, you're tripping, Satan. I'm not going to sacrifice worshiping my father and get all this that my God already promised me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? 
See this thing? Satan's always gonna, everything Satan offers you is overpriced. Eventually, it, it, it might seem like, oh man, I'm getting a good, a good price on it. I feel like this product is good and I don't have to pay much. But eventually, God, see the thing is what Satan does, he gives what you're right. And he takes away what you're left, what, you're, what your life most depends on. It. So you might see the thing, everything Satan offers is overpriced. And so the second point is uh, the second thing that Judas, what made Judas' success a bad success is the source behind it. See, we see a lot of, uh, a lot of shootings, a lot of things, a lot of killings that's going on in our, in our nation, in, our, in America. And we think that's all. We know that's all sponsored by Satan. That's because Satan is behind it. But we don't know is there's some success that Satan is behind also. He tries to give success so that when he gives it, you might be like, yeah, yeah, I like this. And then eventually, like I said, he gives what you're right and he takes away what you're left. So my, many of you guys might think, so what, what's a godly success? What's a good success? One, is it overpriced? And two, what is the source behind it? Is it God or is it Satan? And three, the destination. See, most success, you would think most success ends in happiness. You know, you know like, like it's, it's on a Friday, the statistic says that happiness goes up like 10% on a Friday. Why? Because one, the weekend's the next day. And, um, and you get, most people get paid. See, Judas was getting paid his 30 shackles. He got it. He's supposed to be happy. He succeeded in the thing. But the Bible says once he got the money, he was in remorse. Why? Because when success comes at the cost of your faith, the cost of your relationship with your family, or coming against uh, uh, your standards or, or your purity, that success is success from Satan. Amen? And the thing is, the thing is, uh, the, Satan offered him, he got what he wanted. But when he got what he wanted, the Bible said he, he got it and he threw the shackles on the floor. And he said, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I thought I got when I got success. Amen. And the thing is, when we, when we think success brings us happiness, it does. But only if it didn't come at the cost of our faith. Only if it didn't come at the cost of us losing our relationship with Christ. And when you, sacrifice your, when you sacrifice your health, your family relationship with God, and that's exactly what Judas is. That's exactly what Judas betrayed him. Judas, he, he succeeded, but it wasn't the success that me and you want because it came to the cross of his, of his relationship with Jesus Christ and eventually his own life because what the, when he got the shackles, the Bible said he ripped off his clothes. He threw the shackles on the ground, and he said, this is not what I wanted when I meant success. This is what, not what I wanted when I meant and when I sacrifice what success and then he went and hung himself see every success that ends in a suicide is one it's overpriced it's from satan and it'll always live uh always end up into a christless eternity that is not a success that me and you want so if you reach the top of the world but God is not behind it, eventually it will kill you. Because Judas got what he wanted, but eventually it killed him. It was a success, don't get me wrong, but it eventually it killed him and sent him and it betrayed him and Jesus. And the, the last thing I want to bring to you guys is my fourth point. It is failures are, are not final. See, we see, Peter, we see Peter failing many times. He goes into fishing, and he never catches any fish. He, uh, he cuts a girl's ear off, which I don't know why you would cut a girl's ear off. And then Jesus just has to, like, put the ear back on. I don't know how he put an ear back on, but he put an ear back on. And then eventually he goes back. It goes back into fishing, and he fails into fishing again. And then after that, he goes and denies Jesus three times. And, but Judas, you see, look at Judas' life, and he succeeded so many times. But still at the end of success, he, you see he comes out better than Peter. Why? Because even though, even though Peter uh, failed so many times, even though Peter denied Jesus so many times, God was still able to take those mistakes, take those failures, and turn them into what we know today as Apostle Paul. And uh, Catholics say that he was the first Pope. Amen? So my, my fourth point is, is failures are not final. 
Your failure is just like Peter. He went through so much. Your failures don't have to be what determines your life. Your failures don't have to be what, what, you, what you are. Your failures are not final decision in your life. The, God, the promises that God has in his word are the final decision of your life. And I, I feel like a lot of people in this room, their failures are determining who they are. Their failures in their family, their past mistakes. Don't get me wrong, your mistakes are true. You did mess up. You did, you did slip up. You did do something at a young age and now you have to live with, with for the rest of your life. But your failures are not fatal. Your failures are not who you are. They are just events. See, and you see in the Bible, Peter fails so many times. And the thing why I love when you fail but you're with God, just like, just like Joseph, uh, he went from a prison, but when you fail with God, you always somehow you end up in a palace. Or you end up like, or like when you're like Job, every single time you fail, you end up, you, you, had abs you have absolutely nothing. Everything is taken away from you, but somehow you end up with more than you've ever had. Or you end up like Peter, you deny Jesus three times, but the same mouth that denied Jesus three, three times with the same mouth that saved 3,000 people. Your failures are not who you are they are just events amen see God doesn't want you God doesn't want you to look like Sergey said God doesn't want you to look at the sin he wants to look at your at the son that he paid the, the price for your sins for your failures so that you can live a blessed life not that so you can live a life where you live and you dwell in your past mistakes that is not why God sent your son would send his son to die on the cross he knew you're gonna sin he didn't he didn't think he didn't die on the cross and pay for your sins up to 17 years old up to 20 years old he knew you're gonna sin at 20 you're gonna keep on sinning but that's why I died on the cross so that you could live a blessed life not a life living in your past mistakes and declaring that's who you are see I love what uh, our worship leader Malachi always says said Jesus came for it all or he came for nothing at all he came for all your sins, not just till 17 years old, but he came for everything. He knew that you're going to slip up. You're going to mess up. But that's why he said in the word, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. That's why we need to fail like Peter. We fail, but we go straight back to God. And God is somehow going to be able to take the mess in our lives, our past mistakes, our past failures. And God is some, gonna, some way. He's going to be able to make you into something you never dreamed about. That's why we sing. When we sing, we say, you made a way where there was no way. I don't know why. I don't know how. But you made a way. And all you have to say is thank you, God. Thank you that I don't have to live in my past mistakes. I don't have to live in my failures. But I can live in the future. I don't have to live. I can live in the, in the, in the promises that you give for me, not in my past mistakes. That is why God has his promises for our life. So that when we mess up, we can look in the word and say, I'm still a, a, a child of the most high God. I'm a still a royal priesthood. I am still, I am still wherever I, I step, I'll be blessed in Jesus' my, in mighty name. So I just want to encourage you guys, fail like Peter. When you fail, go back to God. Let God be your path. Let God be your backup. Let God be where you go to right away. You don't go straight back to drugs. You don't have to go straight back uh, back into your old life. Don't let the, the labels the world has put upon your life determine who you are. Just because you messed up, just because you did something at a young age, that is not who you are what God's word says is who you are we don't live by the stand of the word but of the world but we make the world the stand of our life what God has to say about our lives in Jesus mighty name amen amen thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come